Hey guys, it's Stasia and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freak out book tag. I cannot believe we are already halfway through 2021. Like I don't really, I don't recall doing anything these past half of the year. But here we are anyways. It's fine. We'll get there. But anyways, so I'm not sure who the creator of this tag is, but it's been around for a while. So I know there's like some with different questions. So I'll leave the blog post that I followed along with link down below. Her This one is actually hers from 2020, but we're just going to go with it. So 15 questions, we're going to run through it really quick. So the first question is how much have you read? So on this day that I'm filming it, I have read. My Goodreads goal, first of all, is 100 books. And right now I have read 66. So I've read 66 books, which is great. I'm obviously ahead of my schedule, so that's great. Number two is what have you been reading? So according to the spreadsheet that I use, um, I have mainly been reading romance. That is, I'll put my pie chart here and you'll see that most of it is romance and surprisingly my second largest is fantasy, but I know why that's my second largest, but so I've been reading a lot of romance this year with 32%. Next is best book you've read so far. So for that, I'm actually going to be choosing two. The first one is The Book Thief. I know, I can't believe I read it for the first time this year. I put it off for so long, but I love The Book Thief. Uh, this was the first book to, you know, make me shed a little tears. It was so beautifully written. Um, it's obviously, if you don't know, it's from the perspective of death. So I just thought that was so fascinating. I love to see it. It was great. And then uh, my second one is Starfish. This one I felt like has to be a favorite because I felt seen, I guess you could say in this book. It covers a lot about being Asian American in a community that's not primarily Asian American and self-discovery, figuring out what you want to do in your life, plan B's, Things like that. So I really loved this one. Um, the next book is the best sequel you've read so far. Now, I don't do a lot of series, but I have been reading The Mortal Instrument by Cassandra Clare this year. This is like uh, one of my goals was to finish this series. And my favorite of the entire one was City of Glass. And this was book three. So this was my first five star of the series. And from when I'm filming this, so far my only five star of the series. So this has definitely been my most favorite sequel of the year. Question five is new releases you haven't read yet but want to. Ooh, new releases are hard. Let me look at my new releases sheet. Um, I have a lot of books that have not come out yet that I'm really looking forward to. I guess I would have to choose Kate in Waiting. I don't have this book yet, so obviously I haven't read it yet. But this is by Becky Albertalli, which I loved her other books that I've read of her. And I just haven't picked this one up yet, so I'm not sure why. So I guess that would be a new release I haven't read yet, but I still really want to. So hopefully I get my hand on Kate in Waiting soon and I can get to that. And then question six is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Obviously, Once Upon a Broken Heart. I'm also looking forward to the conclusion of the Serpent and Dove trilogy, which is Gods and Monsters. And that's not come that has not come out yet. Last one would be um, Riley Sager's new novel and that is Survive the Night. So I think those are my top three books that I'm very, very anticipating for the second half of the year. Question seven is your biggest disappointment. Ooh, that would be hard. I guess if I had to choose a disappointment, it would probably be Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you would know that I did not love this book and I feel like it's probably my, big, my biggest disappointment because of how much everyone loves this book. Up until I read it, I've only seen good things, but since I've read it, I've seen like a lot of other people have the same thoughts as me where it's just like, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it was just, fine so that's kind of how i felt about this one it was very underwhelming i wish that there was more everyone loved it and i guess it's a disappointment because it wasn't my favorite so that's just how it is another disappointment that i also gave three stars just didn't love didn't hate was actually the midnight library by matt haig this sounded right up my alley it was about basically like having second chances on if you just made 
one tiny decision differently. It's set in a library. It was set up to be everything I loved, but I just didn't. So this was also a disappointment, unfortunately. So question eight is the biggest surprise. And for that, I'm actually going to go with A Killer Harvest. I read this for Spooktober, like the mini Spooktober a few months ago, and I was really surprised by this one, especially because I've never heard of this author or this book before. This book came out a while ago. I got it in a book box a while ago and just never read it, but I ended up absolutely loving it. Like I ate it up so quick. It was so good that I still want to check out more from this author. So this has definitely been the biggest surprise. The next question is new favorite author, which is either a debut or a new to you. And for that, I have to go with John Mars. I read this book in a day. His writing is just so engaging that I could not put it down. So it would definitely be John Mars. Although I have not read anything else from him. Once I read this, I immediately put his entire backlist on my wish list. So definitely love his writing the concepts of his book amazing so it would probably have to be john mars even though i've only read one of his books but it's fine the next question is underrated gems you've recently discovered i'm gonna have to go with where it all lands by jenny wexler this is actually her debut novel and i read the arc version so this technically doesn't come out on july 6th but honestly if this book does not get the hype it deserves i'm gonna lose it because this book is so good and i have a feeling it's gonna fly under the radar just because I know so many good books coming out in July for like summer and everything, but this is gonna be an underrated gem. Um, number 11 is rereads this year, and as of now, I have not reread anything, so I can't help you there, sorry. Book that made you cry. So the only books that have made me cry both in my lifetime and this year is The Book Thief and Where It All Ends. The Book Thief made me cry a little bit. I had a couple tears, that was great. Where It All Ends made me full on sob. So take that as you will. 13 is a book that made you happy. So for books that made me happy, I'm gonna go with two books. The first one being The Un Honeymooners by Christina Lauren. This was the first book that I've ever read from this author. I read this for a reading vlog. That was a taste test of these authors and absolutely loved it. It was so good. It reminded me so much of just vacation and happiness that we really need <laughs> so hopefully a vacation will come soon and that it just made me happy because it reminded me what it was like to be out there and the second book that made me happy was the house in the cerulean sea this really is just like a warm blanket fresh out of the dryer it's just so cozy quick to read the characters are amazing loved it so this also made me happy 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received Ooh, that's kind of hard so i guess the prettiest book that i have recently bought is yoke and it is by mary h k Choi. uh just look at this first of all it's yellow which is my favorite color and then the spine actually connects both the front and the back and it also does that with the naked cover too do you guys see that yeah, so this is probably the prettiest book that I bought because it's yellow and the detail on the pages. Chef's kiss. And then 15 is your goals for the rest of the year. And I'm still obviously continuing with my 100 books in a year. So I still want to complete my 100 because I've obviously only done 66 so far. I also want to finish... Uh, the Mortal Instruments, which I'm, which I'm not quite done yet. I also want to read the entirety of the Lunar Chronicles. And I want to continue with my 12 and 12 challenge from recommended from friends. I'll leave it in the cards in the description if you don't know what I'm talking about. But I am doing really well on that challenge. So that's going good. But yeah, so that has been the mid-year freak out book tag. And I am kind of freaking out. There's not much. There's only half of the year left and I have not read nearly as much books as I want to and I just keep getting more and there's all these new releases, but it's fine. We will figure it out. I tag whoever wants to do this. Um, I'm not sure how many people are going to be doing the mid-year freak out tag now or later. I know some people do it like later. So if you want to do it, I tag you and you can say I tagged you. Totally fine with that. Yeah. So I will leave the questions and the blog post that I got these questions in the description. You can like, comment, and subscribe down below if you would like. All of my socials, follow me anywhere else, are in the description as always. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!